Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is another Dreams tutorial. We're still working on our enemy scenario. Um, I've done a few improvements to the attacks on both the enemy and the player, and uh, we've added some new things. So what we're going to learn today is how to put in um, enemy spawner, and how to do a count, which you can use for a score for uh, the deaths of an enemy, and also how to uh, query that count so that you can run cutscenes, open doors, etc. Uh, when you get a certain amount of kills or, or whatever it is that you're uh, counting. Right then, let's uh, have a look and see what I've built. Right, so um, you're familiar with this. This is our character. He's got a sword. And um, I've got two instead of one. Uh, monster uh, that has been spawned out of that cave over there. So if I get into the detect zone, whoop, they can both attack me. So you'll be careful about that. Okay, we're gonna kill. Try and kill our monsters. I think I'm gonna die. Yep. Okay, where are they? They're over there. Right, let's try and kill our monsters. Oh, they killed me. But another one has spawned over there because I killed one. But you can see the count on the top right hand corner. I've now killed two and it's gone to two. So another one has spawned. So we're going to have two any one time. And I've, I've got it so that it's going to emit uh, five monsters. That's three I've killed. Right, so we've got our five monsters now. So we're just going to try and kill. Let's run away from them. They should not be detecting me over here. Let me just get some of my health back. Whew. There we go. Come on. There we go. That's four. One left. I don't think nine is going to be enough. So we'll just. Yeah. Oh, we're dead. Right. Okay. Go. Stab, stab, stab. Way. He's dead. And now the door is opened because I've killed my five monsters. I am just recovering. Get some health back. And we can go through the door. There we go. Right then. So let's go into our enemy AI and have a look and see what I've done. Right. Let's start off with our player, shall we? So here is our player. Now, the way we built it last time, um, we had... Um, on our sword we have a health modifier and um, what was happening was uh, the sword when it was in contact with our monster whether you'd thrust it or not uh, just the uh, touch of this sword on that monster was causing uh, the sword to uh, cause damage and we don't want that so um, now what we've done is we've linked our counter for the sword attack to the power of that health modifier. So now it only changes the health of our enemy when you actually press the button, press the R2 button and thrust with the sword. So it's it's uh, much better now, so it's only inflicting damage uh, when you're actually um, fighting with it. And that's it, that's all I've changed in the player, so we can check that player down right uh, now I've done quite a few changes in the uh, the monster brain um, I've got the monster brain um, open here um, you might recognize some of these things so first of all um, I've added a attack change to our monster now, somebody asked me, uh, why did I use a signal manipulator? Uh, one of the reasons um, 
is that I wanted the facility to be able to change it at any point. Um, so the timings between the attacks can be changed easily by changing the uh, pause time range in this signal generator. And I've chosen to do that with a randomizer and a variable. So um, here is the attack pause variable. It's just a, a, a variable, I've called it attack pause. Uh, I haven't changed any of the defaults, it's exactly as it comes. And then I've got this little uh, loop here. So I've got a timer set to 0.1 seconds and that's going to send a message to randomize. It's going to randomize A, that one, B and C. These are variable modifiers. These are going to change this number. So this variable modifier, variable name attack pause, it's going to set every time it's powered on to 0.5. And this A is linked to the power on on that variable modifier. So every time A is chosen, it's going to change this variable to 0.5. This 0.5 current value wire into the pause time on our signal generator. So this one, that's 0 0.3 and this one is 0 0.7. You can change it to whatever, you could have it a second, two seconds, whatever you want to do. Um, so these are very uh, d different uh, pauses. And what will happen is uh, when you are, your enemy is in attack mode, it's going to turn on the signal generator. It's going to turn on this timer. And that is going to randomize a variable modifier, which is going to change the signal generator up here, which is then going to send a signal to our attack animation. And when our attack animation is finished, it's going to reset this timer, which is then going to change this attack pause. So every time you attack, it's going to be a slightly different attack speed. So you'll put punch faster or, or slower, uh, depending on that randomizing. So that just makes it a little bit, a um, little bit better. So he's not like just punching at you, the, the, uh, the timed thing, there's a gap and you could do all sorts of things with this randomizer, uh, add different um, things to this. And we might do that uh, at a later time. Right, the other thing that I've changed um, is uh, the detect now, before we had some um, gates in here, we had some exclusive gates. Now, because I want to spawn um, my enemy, it's not just one enemy anymore, I want it to spawn. Uh, an exclusive gate, I've discovered, is not dependent on each microchip, it's dependent on the scene. So, um, we can't have um, trigger zones uh, working only for one of the monsters at a time we want them all to be able to do it so i've removed the exclusive gates and now i'm, I'm wiring um, this one directly so with the trigger zone instead of going to the exclusive gate it's, it's wiring wiring directly uh, into uh, the attack counter and this one which is the follow um trigger zone um i have wired that uh, to an AND gate and then I'm checking to see if um, we're in the attack zone not in the attack zone and wired that in so if you are in the trig trigger zone for following but you're not in the attack zone then we're going to wire that to the follow me in the um, in the monster brain which is what we did uh, last time okay right so there's the changes to the detection. We've also got changes in our death animation. We've added a variable modifier. This variable modifier is going to add one to a kills variable. That kills variable is not in our monster. It is set separately in this microchip here. This is our kills variable. There it is there. And that was what that, that number was that was displayed in the top right hand corner there. We'll look at that in a minute. But so when you die, it's just going to add to that variable. Okay, so that's the changes that I have made 
to our monster and here is our monster spawner right i've got a microchip here in this sort of cave area now you don't you can have uh, your monsters your enemies whatever spawning in midair if you want i think it's better to have them coming out of something so um so that they they don't appear just appear so coming out of a cave through a doorway uh, something like that is is probably preferable than having them to spawn in midair so I've got a microchip inside this cave and it has an emitter in it let's open the emitter brain right here is the emitter menu I'm going to keep saying brain this is this it's five years of playing project spark I do apologize right okay so you've opened up the emitter menu okay I've um object to emit I've attached to our monster so you just do this and attach to the monster um I've got uh, an emit speed uh, quite low and uh, so it's just going to come out a little bit not too fast uh, no rotation speed ignore this time between emits is, is a second it's going to do a continuous emit um, and the emitted object lifetime is infinite we don't want them disappearing suddenly right so at the moment I've got it so that I can have two at a time so um, I want five maximum so five monsters are going to be emitted by this cave but only two two at any one time so as soon as um one of those monsters is killed it's going to emit another one until five um have been emitted you obviously can change this you can have it so it's five and five so it could emit all of them all, all at the same time it's entirely up to you what you do but this is the how many is is alive at any one time and these are the maximum amount that you're going to emit in the entire game right so there we go and now we've got the emitter it's, it's going to emit here in this direction and we've changed it so that he's facing outwards like that so there is our emitter now let's have a look at um, our microchip for the counter okay so we've already seen that we've got a variable called kills and it's linked to a number displayer it's also linked whoops into a calculator so um, it's wired into the a socket and it's checking to see does it equal five so have I killed five monsters if this is true then it's going to link to a timeline line and a trigger zone and that triggers only to look to a doorway. So when um, you've done five, it's going to go and, and start this timeline. This timeline has got a camera inside it. Uh, if you haven't seen my um, video on sticking cameras in timelines, then I suggest you have a look at that to see how that works. So here's my uh, camera. It's pointing at the door. And I've got a keyframe of the door being opened. And I've got that keyframe on a slow power up so the door will swing open so there's a our animation of the door and the camera uh, so it's going to run that timeline and then we've got our trigger zone make sure this timeline is going to play with a sustain or play once um, either of which will work do not have it in a loop otherwise uh, you'll never get back to your player um, this trigger zone is for walking through the door so when the player walks through the door I've got a doorway and you could link that to your next level if you want at the moment it will just close the game so there we are that's how you do a count so you basically have a variable and a calculator and you say okay once I've got five of these ten of these fifty of these whatever uh, I can add to the trigger zone now at the moment um, our variable is adding to uh, our kills it could also add to a score so you could maybe score ten instead of one and make this a score um, and then you could uh, populate this to um, a score modifier which would then alter a score and you could post a score up for how much you scored for attacking your monster 
so that's the the simple way of, uh, of doing that and of course we saw where that was that was housed in the uh, the, the death uh, microchip and there's the variable modifier there that would alter your score there you go right hope that was useful to you um if there's anything you want to see in this particular scenario let me know in the comments and also any other um tutorials that you would like me to do try to make them very general not like very specific to your particular game need um because i don't um i won't be making tutorials on um on how to get something very specific in your game it's more of a generic uh, idea of a tutorial that I'm after really. Okay, so thank you for watching. Hope that was useful and I'll catch you in your dreams. <laughs>